It's time for another garden update. Let's go out there and see what's been going on. I lost my first batch of seedlings to damping off so the list has changed slightly. It feels pretty good to finally have some tomatoes in the ground. In the first row the ones that made the cut are Rosella Purple, Kookaburra Cackle, and Sleeping Lady. In the second row I have two Baronia plants and a Tasmanian chocolate. Those are two of my favorites from last year. If you're wondering about the cups at the base of the plants, those are to keep the cutworms out. If you want more information on that, I did a video on that subject and I'll put a link down below. The garlic is off to a great start and is really doing well right now. Here's a look at the peppers out in the main garden. I ended up with 14 in the main garden and I'll be putting more in containers and grow bags. In the first row we have Sugar Rush Cream, Jimmy Nardello, New Mex Heritage Big Gem Chili Pepper, Cubanelle, one of my Black Pearl Hybrids, Rowia, and Blot. In the second row are Ahi Rio, Oda, Buena Mulata, Albino Bullnose, Legia, Chinese Five Color Hot, and Mega Gold. Mega Gold is one that did really well for us last year. I have spinach planted between the two rows of peppers. And about the time the peppers will need more room, it'll be time for the spinach to be pulled out. On the other side of the peppers, I have a mixed row of lettuce that is just now starting to take off. Next to the lettuce, we have radishes, and those are starting to grow well also. It won't be long and we'll be able to enjoy some fresh salads from the garden. In this row, I'm going to plant a few of the japonica corn. Japonica corn is an ornamental corn that has really cool looking variegated foliage. Last year I crossed Japonica corn with our ornamental popcorn that I grow. I'll be planting that cross next to the Japonica corn in this row. And on this end of the row we'll have a short double row of beets. In this row I'll be planting more of that corn cross that I talked about earlier and I'll be using it to pollinate itself and the japonica corn. I'll do that by removing the tassels on the japonica corn. Like in the previous row, on the near end I'll be planting a short double row of beets. In the next row I'll be planting a few more beets and in all I'll have four different types of beets. The petunias and the hollow logs are starting to bloom now and they'll be changing a lot over the next several weeks. In the stackable pots I have 15 different types of lettuce growing and I'll be thinning those to one of each type soon. I'll also be thinning out the lettuce and the grow bag to one of each type. This is my fifth year for these same grow bags and if you want to know more about them I did a video on them and I'll put a link to that down below. In this grow bag I have four ornamental peppers. In the front is my purple flash hybrid that I'm working with. Then we have two New Mex Easter and two explosive ember. In the next two grow bags I have two tiny tomato plants. I'm not sure how those will do but the first one is Marlinga. And the second one is Lemon Ice. The sugar ant peas are growing pretty well so it was time to give them some support. I just stuck some bamboo down into the container. Then I bunched the bamboo pieces at the top and fastened them together with a zip tie. It only took a few minutes to do and now they have something to climb on. I've also been busy trying to get the straw bales planted. This year I have six bales two bales tied together in three different locations. I'm growing sweet potatoes in the straw bales again this year because it worked out so well last year. When it comes to planting sweet potatoes in my straw bales I don't do anything complicated. I just stick the roots down into the planting hole and then pull in soil around it until it looks even and then I water. That's just about it. 
Of course, there's a lot of prep work that goes into growing things in straw bale. So if you want to learn more about that, I have a couple of videos about it, and I'll put those down below also. The no-dig potatoes are starting to stick up through the straw now, and as those grow, I'll pile up more straw around them. I've gotten a few questions about the dangers of using straw in your garden. Specifically, can you get persistent herbicides in the straw that you buy? The short answer to that question is yes, you can. Anytime you buy straw, hay, compost, or manure from somewhere else and bring it into your garden, there is risk involved. I use straw around the edges of my garden, and the straw that I buy comes from one source. If you're going to buy straw, hay, manure, or compost from anywhere, make sure you ask them if it's been exposed to persistent herbicides, like Grazon. The person who I buy straw from gets it from their own farm. The bananas have really perked up since we've gotten past our cold weather. That Musa velatina has two leaves on it now, and the Musa basju is showing more growth every day. So far, I've seen no signs that the dwarf Orinoco survived our harsh winter, so I bought a replacement, and I hope to plant it this week. I told you last week that the cardinals built a nest in one of our bushes. I noticed a female fly out of it, so I went and looked, and this is what I saw. In the coming week, I hope to get our beans, cucumbers, and melons planted, as well as a few other things. Be sure and like this video and share it with your friends. We'll see you next time.